film is very good. I would say this are what I've seen are not new because we've been dealing with that over the years. But to have it visually so that we can use it as a tool, you know, in educating broader members of the community, I think it's going to be very useful, very helpful. I think this film and advocacy work in general will have a positive impact in helping raise awareness and helping people know what's happening. But if you're asking me, do I think that films like this and advocacy work alone is going to be enough? Then the answer is no. Problems in immigration are not detached from societal problem that we have in general. As long as people are being forced out of the Philippines and other develop, so-called developing countries, there's going to be a demand for cheap labor around the world. Intellectually, I knew the problem, but seeing, seeing it where it hits you, you see the kids missing their mom. Kids should spend their best years with their moms, you know? It's so hard and it's insane that we allow that kind of separation to take place. I've always said, and this is the line that we've used over and over again, if you're good enough to work here, you're good enough to stay here permanently with your family. At least 200,000 temporary foreign workers come every year. And just recently, Diane Finley in the last budget said, oh, you know, it's okay if we pay them 15% less. 15% less. Right? That's outrageous. Do the same work. Why is it that they are paid 15% less? I've been here in Canada for 23 years. And for, for that long, I've been uh, advocating for the rights and welfare of living caregivers. I've been advocating for change in policies so that temporary workers who come here in Canada are protected. Migrante has been out there. Uh, working uh, to, to promote the rights and welfare for migrant workers and also trying to change policies like both at the federal level and the provincial level. But we need to do more in terms of coalescing or working together with other migrant organizations from other countries and working with organized labor like the trade unions. As one of the lawyers in the film said, you know, the jobs that these temporary workers are doing are not temporary jobs. So why bring in temporary workers? Why don't bring in permanent residency to respond to a long-term, you know, job need or employment need here in Canada? And secondly, um, make sure that, you know, um, newcomers, new immigrants are given the same uh, privilege and the same access you know to profession accreditation of their educational uh, background and experience so that they come here and work in the professions that they are trained to the other one is you know canada to to be consistent what it's claiming that we are an international player and influence as far as human rights promoting human rights is concerned human rights should be given priority than trade and investment Right. It is a problem of immigration, but it's not a problem of immigration alone. You have to connect immigration to militarization. You have to connect immigration to a corporate destruction of the environment. You have to connect immigration to the exploitation of other cultures and racism and sexism, etc., etc., etc. So we have to realize that the problem that we have today in the world is a systemic problem. It's going to take what was also brought up in this. No country can do this alone. But we need a critical mass of people to realize what the problems are and to connect the problem to not an incremental change or to, to not a specific problem. With the immigration debate, you'll have certain segment of Canadian society saying, they stole our jobs. You'll have another segment of society, uh, the activist segment, going, no, they're not. They're, they deserve to stay. The truth is really halfway, isn't it? These people from poor countries and developing countries are coming to Canada and they are taking jobs that would otherwise go to Canadians. And jobs that otherwise went to Canadians are going overseas. Sometimes with the bickering that we're missing out on is we're losing sight of the common enemy. Yes, migrants are coming to Canada and taking jobs. But those are the jobs that, you know, they've slashed rates by. In, like in the film, like they're paying them three fifty an hour instead of 10 what, whatever minimum wages in the different provinces, right? So the problem isn't the immigrants coming over. It's the fact that 
The society that we live in is so geared towards profit that it's ignoring its own citizens. Do I think that it's going to get any better anytime soon? If by getting better you mean will the program be um, improved so that people can come back and become full immigrants? I don't think so. I think this is the trend for the future, for the foreseeable future, is that we're, we're, we're moving towards more temporary style work. So what do we need to do? We need to go and tell the public, not just about ourselves, because we all know. The fact we're here watching the movie, we all know, right? But if you walk out in the street and ask anyone on Bloor Street right now, on Bedford or in St. George, do you know how many temporary foreign workers come into Canada? Do you know what they do? Oh, maybe farmers or nannies? No, no, they do all types of other things. So we need to educate the public, and the film is one way to educate the public. But the other thing is that we have to challenge them in Parliament. We have to, right? Greed. The crux of the problem is greed and not understanding that workers have rights and that in Canada we are built, we as a nation are built by immigrants. We need immigrants and their entire families to help build Canada. We need their kids and their parents, not just the workers. But if people are good enough to work here, they're good enough to stay here permanently. We just need to communicate this to the general public. We have a government that are committed to continue the exploitation and we need to either change their minds or change the government.